We use this chart to determine what type of bond occurs between two elements. Here's the three choices. You can have an ionic bond, which means the electrons are transferred, and that results in a positive or negative charge. It could also be a polar covalent bond, which means there's an unequal sharing of electrons, and that results in a partial charge. Or you could have a nonpolar covalent bond, which is an equal sharing of electrons, and that means there'll be no charge on the compound. How you determine that is comparing the electronegativity values between the elements. If it's bigger than 1.67, it would be an ionic bond. If the difference between both elements is somewhere between these two numbers, it's a polar covalent bond. If the difference in electronegativity between elements is less than 0.6, it will be a nonpolar covalent bond. In order to determine the bond type, you must compare electronegativity values. In this case, the electronegativity value of chlorine is 3.0, whereas sodium is 0.9. The difference between these two numbers is 2.1. Chlorine is 2.1 times stronger than sodium, which comparing to the chart, we know that it's an ionic bond, and the electron actually transfers. It leaves sodium, goes to chlorine, which makes chlorine negative and sodium positive. Now we look at HCl, chlorine again is 3, but now hydrogen is 2.1. The difference is 0.9, which our chart tells us is polar covalent, so they share. However, because chlorine is quite stronger than hydrogen, there's partial charges. And because chlorine is stronger, it gets more of the electron, which means it's partially negative, which leaves hydrogen to be partially positive. And that's what polar means, opposites, minus, plus. Now we have O2 oxygen. They're both fighting for each other's electrons. But oxygen fights against oxygen, and the difference is obviously going to be zero, which means it's nonpolar covalent. So it's an equal sharing. And now there is no charge, there is no polarity. We have just discussed why sodium has a plus charge and chlorine has a minus charge. Now let's take a look on why that makes salt a solid at room temperature. This would be an example of what a salt crystal would look like. You have Cl attracted to the Na, the plus attracted to the minus, attracted to the plus, the plus attracted to the minus, and so on. And that's why salt is a solid, because the particles are very close together, they're stuck together, they're bonded with a very strong attractive force, because opposites attract in nature. And that's why it takes a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius to melt salt. Now let's take a look on why water is a liquid at room temperature. We have the electronegativity value of 3.5 and 2.1, which is a difference of 1.4, which means it's polar covalent, which tells us that there is partial charges. And again, because oxygen is stronger, it gets more of the electron, therefore it's partially negative, leaving hydrogen partially positive. So when this water molecule comes close to another water molecule, there is an attraction between this H and this O because, once again, opposites attract. This is called hydrogen bonding. And it would look the same on the other side. Partially positive is attracted to the partially negative. There is an attractive force between those two molecules. Now this attractive force is not as strong as salts, but it is pretty strong, meaning that these particles are attracted to each other, so at room temperature, they are attracted enough to make them a liquid, the particles stick together. Oxygen is a gas at standard conditions because there is virtually no attraction between this oxygen molecule to any other oxygen molecule. And that is because they both have the same electronegativity value, meaning there's no polarity in this bond. There is no plus, there's no minus anywhere. It's completely equal. 
So when this oxygen molecule comes close to this oxygen molecule, there's virtually no attraction between the compounds. So the smallest bit of temperature will send their speed to overcome the attractive forces. In fact, it takes a temperature of negative 183 degrees Celsius to turn oxygen into a liquid. And it turns into a liquid at that temperature because the particles move so slow that now these electrons are actually attracted to the protons in the other atom.